And when you pull up your homework now, as with all the tests, when I go over the test in class, I assign the dates, just like I said in the second day video, just like I said, you know. You have a work email. Uh, just like I said on the second day video. Um, when I go over the test, I assign the homework um, dates as well as the test dates. And of course, you look at your outline. The outline tells you that chapter one, two, and three are on the first test. Pretty simple. Okay? Now let's go to the test. There's the test. When you pull it up, look what it gives you. Let's talk about the information it gives you. For all you hammies running around in circles wanting to know what date, there it is. Write it down. Do a little dance. I swear. I bet I've gotten at least 15 emails. When's the test you? When's the test you? When do you think the test going to be? When do you think the test going to be? Just do the freaking homework, okay? You do the homework every day after this class, and you won't have to worry about what? The dates. I know who's worried about the dates. Who's worried about the dates? The people that wait till the last minute. That's who's worried about the dates. There it is. Hubert's unit one test. Look over there. Gives you the time limit. I'm only supposed to give you 50 minutes. You. Now, these, these tests, when we grab a question and we pull it over, it tells us how many minutes they, 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 they take these. Well, let me just put it to you this way. These websites are one big collection service. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Talking about the probability of statistics. Every problem that students do for homework, they look at it and they pull it in to that one problem, exact same problem. And they may have 2,000 students, 2 million students taking it. And then they take the average of the time that it takes the students to do that one problem. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So each problem has a time limit that I see. And it's based on the average, national average. So when I pull it over, I look at the time of the test. And I put it right at 50 to 55 minutes. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. I give you 90 minutes to take the test. Now why do I do that? To take care of what? Excuses. Excuses. Okay. Now, I do realize that there are some people that need extra time. I understand that. That's another reason I do it. Okay. So, and you'll notice a lot of things I do with my test, I cover a lot of excuses. You have one week to take the test from today. That takes care of the five-day funerals and the five-day grandmothers and all that stuff that y'all use when we give you an in-class test that y'all have, five flat tires. Yeah, that takes care of all of that crap. All right? Look at there. How many attempts do you have? This My Labs Plus just gives you all kind of information, doesn't it? I had somebody ask me yesterday, when's the test to you? Don't even look. They just, and that was right before class. That's what did 120. It was in uh, my 130 or, no, it was in the, uh, yeah, it was in the 155 class. And uh, I'd already assigned the test last week, Friday. And just as pretty as you please, he said, when's the test do you? I said, I have no earthly idea. And that's what I will tell you when you ask me when the test is due, because what's going to tell you when the test is due? My lab's plus. You just have to, what is it? Look. All right, so you click on it. Now, I'm just going to go through the preview so it looks a little bit different from your test, but you get the whole gist of it. So we're going to go through the test. This is not going to be exactly like your test. Don't think I'm that stupid. It algorithmically generates, it reorders, and it pulls from 10 questions, 10, a minimum of 10 questions on each test. So if I give you 10 questions, I may have over 100 questions 
that it pulls from. Each question pulls from like 10 of the same type problem. So I'm just letting you know how I do my test. So there it is. It's got the due dates on it. Right now, everybody should be putting that in their calendar right now, the 13th. But, oh, we have a calendar, don't we? Yeah, where is the calendar? I don't think it does it come up right here. Well, I don't know where it is, but anyway. Where? I'm looking, I'm looking above homework. No, that's the that's the calendar for the school. Oh, thank you. You even got a calendar right there. Look at there. It's a miracle. When's twins test due? When's homework due? Usually, after I have signed the test, I cut the homework off. What decides when I cut the homework off? I usually give you the next meeting date to do homework and send in your last questions. Are those last questions supposed to be on what chapter 1, 2, or 3.5? 3.5. That way, you can save yourself a little window after class Thursday, Tuesday, to do any of 3.5 or 3.4 and finish the last couple of tries on your test. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I always give you that last, that, that last day or that last meeting time. Okay? So that takes care of the excuse, oh, well, I didn't get the question in in time. But I'm not going to go over Chapter 1 and 2 because you had your chance for that. Capiche? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's for people that don't even know how to use a calendar. You even got your calendar right there. You can pull it up. The reason I was looking for it was when my lab Plus first came out, it had the calendar show up first, which I don't know. I probably could fix that and make that number one, and it would probably come up first, but I just don't feel like it. Okay, so there's your section 1.1 due on the what? On the 11th. And the test is due on the 13th. You have a work email. That still gives you two days to do the test after I go over that homework. Boy, I'm just covering all kinds of excuses, ain't I? I know, I'm a bastard. <laughs> Next, let's go to the test. Oh, there's somebody out there going, damn him. He's taking all my excuses away from me. Now you see why I say if you meet somebody that makes below a 50 in my class, move away from them slowly because something's wrong with them. All right, preview. A certain standardized test method has a bell-shaped curve with a mean of, what does this mean? When you see those words, what does that mean? Draw the damn curve. That's what it means. So go ahead and draw it. Before you even, well, I don't know what the questions ask to draw the damn curve. Now, who's our one person that printed out the bell curve? There she is. I knew one person would do it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Shut up. If you ain't done it by now, you ain't going to do it. I had one person out of the other math 120 do it. And she said, you know what she said? She said, oh, it's a whole lot helpful. I don't have to draw that curve every time. You think? So draw the curve. Fill in the percentages. If you're sitting there not knowing what to draw, you've missed the boat and the train because you, we've been going over the empirical rule for at least a week and a half now. Problem is I can't pull in a Google drawing on the transparency. Maybe one day when we get training, I'll be able to do that, but I don't think it can do it. But if I live to be, to, you know, if I live 2050, we may be training on these episodes. So, 515 
and I need somebody to add the three over here, and I need somebody to subtract over here. I'm going to fill out the little .15, 2, 0.35, 13, 0.5, 34, 34, 13, 0.5, 2, 0.35, and 0.15. So somebody give me the numbers over here. What's 515 plus 114? 629. 629 be 743. Somebody check me. 743 be 858. 857. Oh, okay. And you can forget about the subtraction because I can't subtract. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask y'all for those. Plus 515 minus the 114. 401. And give me the next one. 280 what? Start to mumble on me. Next one. 473. Good. Golly. You said that nice and clear. Yeah. All right. So now we're done with this. That's what that's for. Now we're done. All you got to do now is just get a handy dandy different color highlighter for each question. So let's do that. Let's get our handy dandy highlighter yellow. And we'll do this one. What percentage standardized test score is between 173 and 857? Now you can do this one of two ways. You can do it the hard way and add all those numbers up, or you can do it the easy way and remove the complements. The complements what makes up the whole. If I if I give you a dollar, and if that's the only dollar you've got, that's the whole, right? If I take sixty-five cent away from you, then what is the complement of sixty-five cent of that dollar? Thirty-five cent. That's the complement. What makes up the whole? Okay, capiche? Mm -hmm. So, what is the complement of all that yellow? Those two 15 cent pieces out there. What's 15 cent, 15 cent? What's 30 cent from 100? 30 cent from $100. and seventy cent. and that's your answer. $99 and 70 cent. Now, don't, it says round to one decimal place. I can't remember. Somebody help me out with the homework because I think the 120 does four places. The 103, y'all don't know how to do decimals, so the 103 dummies down everything. So the 103 does 99.7. But I don't know, do they want .997 or do they want 99.7? Y'all remember from the homework? It tells you like it tells you. It says percent, so it should be ninety nine point seven. Okay, now let's take the now it says let's take another highlighter. I'm gonna try this again. I don't know why you asked me that. Let's take Verde. We're going to do Verde right here. What is less than 173 and greater than 857? We just said that. What is it? 0.3, right? So that's going to be 0.3%. So we'll fill these in in just a second. And now let's do aqua. What percentage is greater than 743? Dang old 2.5%. Uh, so let's go to our handy dandy. That'd be 99.7, and that'll be 
what do we say, 0 0.3, and no, yeah, and 2.5. Now, you can't check your answer. This is just for my previews, just to show you that I know what I'm doing halfway. There you go. That's 100% empirical rule. If you don't know the empirical rule, then you stammered when you drew it, and you don't understand what I'm doing here. And we've been going over it a week and a half. Capiche? Next. Find the sample standard deviation. Okay, let's do this one. I'm going to put it on the spreadsheet. I'll put it in order for you because I'm, I'm good like that. And I try to help you out. And I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Let's go. Thank you. There you go. And I'll put it in order for you. You're welcome. I'm going to just go ahead and find everything, and we'll skip those questions because if you can do this, what I'm fixing to do, then you can do any of those questions. Mean, median, mode. Range, mid range, variance, standard deviation. I'm going to go ahead and do the five number summary too because you got a good many numbers here. Five number summary, and that's the min. First, second, third, and the max. Now, while y'all are working, I'm going to be doing mine, and you can be checking your work as I do mine, okay? Or you can just sit there and be a disappointment. Disappointment, best fine. Everybody needs to be a disappointment one day, you know. And if you want a disappointment, you know, you wouldn't have to have people like Bernie. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's bad. Feel the burn. Can't, can't help but like the old guy. As long as he sticks it to the establishment, I'm pulling for him. Not, not for president. I'm pulling for him for a nomination because I, I just I just like anybody that goes against the establishment. And old Joe, he don't know what state he's in, so. But he kisses his granddaughter real nice. Woo! Y'all have no idea what I'm talking about because y'all don't keep up with anything. So anyway, his daughter, his daughter, like introduced him on stage and you know his granddaughter I'm sorry his granddaughter and I don't know if you've seen it but did you did anybody see him kiss his granddaughter oh my gosh no I don't do that because somebody will complain it was right on the mouth and it wasn't no peck it 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 was gross Creepy. Creepy's conservative. That man is... What What you ought to do is, is do uh, Creepy Joe or, or Joe's compilation on the YouTube and look at all the girls and little girls. I'm talking about little girls. And they're like getting away from him. Not to mention the women. Come here, little girl. I want to snip your hair. <laughs> but I love to see Bernie give a speech. He gets all mad and starts throwing his arm. We're gonna take we're gonna give you free health care. We're gonna give you free college. We're gonna give you free this. We're gonna give you free everything. Oh, I love to watch him. He's funny. Okay, I'll shut up. 
Y'all got to concentrate. No coughing in class. How many we got? Nine? All right, I'm going to divide that by nine. Nine, then go five. I don't care about the mode. Y'all can fill that out. Equals this minus this. Equals parentheses this plus this. Divided by two. Equals this minus this F four copy. This raised to the second power. Then old summation. Mr. Pap, you ain't back there watching TV, are you? You ain't watching Bernie back there, are you? I'm just kidding. I don't forgot what to divide by. Oh, eight. And that's equal to this raised to the 0.5 power. All right, there's all your numbers there. Put my little dot right here. How many numbers do I have above five? Above 194? Four. So how do I find the mean of four, I'm, I'm sorry, the median of four numbers? Find the average of the two middle two, right? Find the average of the middle two. Mm. I'm going to color them dang over day. And I'm going to come down here. And that's equal to parentheses. This guy plus this guy divided by two. And I'm going to color these two guys. Let me use that aqua again. Aqua equals parentheses this guy plus this guy divided by two. And there is your five number summary. So let's go ahead and Let's do, our, let's do our box plot because if you can do the empirical rule, then you can do the curve. So I'm not really worried about that. There we go. And I'll put a little hashtag here or a little mark there and a little mark here. Oh, did I tell you, we got our faculty staff work day schedule. Oh, me. Guess what we get to do for half a day? Look at posters. Guess how much training we get for technology in the classroom? One hour. One hour. I told y'all that, didn't I? 2050. Yep. All right, so I put 168 here. And I put 287 here. What is my mid range? 228. Now I've used that number. I've used that number. So now the only thing I need to do, but I got to graduate this first. Ooh, 168. That's 60. Half of 60 is what? 30. 
30 is 198, and 30 is 258. Y'all check my math. And half of 30 is 15. 200 minus 15 is 285, so that would be what? 287? Somebody check my math, or would it be 283? Which one is it? Or one, 183. Is it 187 or 183? Add 15 to, I think it'd be 183. That's all right. I'll do it, y'all. That's okay. Yeah, Thank you, one person. I appreciate that. Out of 30, y'all suck. 15 be 213, right? And 258 minus 15 would be 243. Yes. And what's the last one? I don't feel like doing it. What's 258 or 287 minus 15? 258 plus 15. 260. 276. What? 276. Thank you. <laughs> There's somebody going, where's he getting those numbers at? <clears throat> Train, bus. Airplane, they've missed all three. All right, so now we're ready for the green. Verde, 180. 180. 180. Dang old, right there. Let's go with our blue. Our blue is 254. You're up 254 is right in here. And then, of course, the 194, we'll do that in yellow. 194 is right in here. Now, your box plot is complete. But as we said before, the box plot, the box plot tells us the center, we said, was 228, isn't it? Yeah. The center is 228. So it looks like we got what? A little bit skewed right because a lot of the data is falling on the left. I need to actually move it over a little bit more, but you get the point. If you can do this, you can do pretty much 60 to 70% of this test. The rest is z-scores and then the rest is definitions. So let's move on. Let's answer the questions. I hope y'all wrote all this down because I'm not going back and forth writing down the answers, okay? So let's go back to the question. Whatever. Okay, somebody tell me what the standard deviation was. I don't forgot. 42.9. Look at there. It's a miracle. The only one with United States in front of it. Hint, hint. Although covered in the handouts on the first day of class, what's the best way to communicate? Cell phone. No, you're supposed to wait till week after grade turn in. That's the best time to get in touch with me. Do we get extra points if we I don't know. pull off a carrier pigeon? Yeah, if you can pull off a carrier pigeon, did y'all see that Super Bowl commercial? Dang old carrier pigeon got ate by that dang old. That was good. I love that. I love to see, you know, I love dark humor. Anyway, next, compute the range. Now, if you miss this question, you don't tell anybody. There's some of these questions that if you miss, you just lie, okay? You just say, yeah, I got that right. That was easy. First of all, you got to put them in order, but it looks like it's going to be 25 minus 13. What is that? Thank you. Next. Find the population mean. Now, this is a trick question. Why is it a trick question? My cousin Vinny. Why is it a trick question? Let me guess. Y'all have never seen My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> one of the greatest movies ever. Oh, my gosh. It's one of my favorites. Why is it a trick question? Okay. You have to pick the Greek letter. Somebody tell me why. Because it's the population mean. And this is what students do. I'm picking X bar. 
and they get it wrong. So somebody do it right quick and tell me what the mean is. We're going to try to get all the right answers. 7 and 6, 13, 24, dang old. 24, 33, 50, 50 divided 10. Somebody check to see if it's 10. No, oh, it's got to be the standard. Is it standard? Yeah. Somebody check me. I can hit check answer. Nope. I must be on. Why do y'all do that? I ask y'all what the answer is. And as soon as I hit correct answer, and one person goes 12, and five other people try to beat that person saying 12. Why do y'all do that? Y'all suck. There we go. Thank you, ma'am. Thank y'all both. All right. Number two, most missed bonus question of Hubert's bonus questions. And I want somebody to explain to me how the hell do you miss this question? I don't know. B is looking pretty good right now. Uh, no, okay. B? I don't understand it. Next. In a certain city, an average of 20 to 29 year olds may. 72.5, with a standard deviation of 3.1, while the average of women, okay, what are you comparing here? Apples and oranges. I'm offended. He called women oranges. Okay, apples and oranges. So you got to do a Z what? So do the Z score for each, because they're probably going to give you one of each. They're going to give you the height of a man, and the height of a woman. And then you got to figure the z-score for both. I saw that. That's, that's a yawn. You can't yawn in class. No. After three times, I have to throw you out. You know, we had a teacher do that. She got fired. Duh. She threw out students if they yawned three times. But that one falls in line with the red solo cup guy and the porn speech teacher. And we ain't even going to talk about the Spanish teacher. <laughs> I, uh, just let me let me just say this: If you're going to do something stupid, whether it's illegal, you know, murder, you know, you know, cooking meth, if you're going to do anything stupid in your office, at least lock the door. Okay, diva. There. I don't know what. You can't see through the thing to cover up a dead gum. Well, you don't need that number. It changes the answer just a little bit. All right. So since let's go ahead and be sexist and let's make the men blue. Okay. Let's just be sexist. I can already feel myself. And I, I know. And I'm gonna make the women. I'm gonna make them pink. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna make them pink. Oh, or something. I know. Don't put that over here. Z score for tamales. So for the for the males, uh, average is I'm looking for the height of the male. 75 inch man. Dang on, isn't that Lyndon B. Johnson? One he's 75 inches. Dang, he already almost did this one. Okay, the okay, 72.5 over 3.1. Okay, I hope everybody is not talking while I'm talking because it's starting to get on my nerves. Okay? Alright. Now let's do the pink. And the female, how tall is she? 70? Minus 64.5. I don't already predict how this is going to come out. 3.8. And somebody give me the male Z score. What is it? Uh -huh. What? 
point eight zero six did everybody get that point eight one remember z scores are usually to the second decimal point always remember that because in chapter seven we're going to be doing them the whole unit okay and let's do the famali is equal to what'd you get 1.4 what? Five. Five. So, which one is further out toward the unusual? Female. The female. So she's more ER, whatever. In this case, what are they asking? Relatively what? So she is relatively taller. Now, I did show y'all LBJ versus Shaq, right? Yes, this is the same question. Same exact question, only it's not 80, it's 70. Or 70, yes, yeah, she's 70 instead of Shaq was 80. So, y'all read it. Which one is it? It's smaller. That That's good. Okay, so it's either alpha or delta. Because it says, no... Okay, it's, it's alpha because it says the score, Z man, Z man score. So, so he is relatively taller than all. Yeah, A says he is relatively Okay, well, we need one that says she is relatively taller. Okay, thank you. You were right. I, was, I, I wasn't listening. I suck. It's damn Russian's fault. Not my fault. Anything that happens bad in your life, you're supposed to blame other people. You're not supposed to blame yourself. Z-score for women is 1.45. Is larger than the Z-score for men, 0.81. And we feel good about ourselves. So there's your Z-score question. I told you you were going to have these and your mean media and all that stuff. 80% of the test. There's your five number summary. We'll go back to that one if we can. I want to let you see anything else. If you miss a question on Hubert's test and you believe it is correct, what should you do? This is what y'all do. Y'all do Charlie. That's what y'all do. And why don't I respond? Because you have this question. And I've told you. How do you challenge a question on my test? B is in Bravo. That's how you challenge a question on the test. And one or two of y'all are going to email or text me and say, I got number four wrong, but it's right, and I'm not going to respond. It's real simple. Does Hubert replace your lowest test grade with your final exam grade? There's only one answer, delta. Okay, determine whether the quantitative variable is discrete or continuous. Remember, discrete, you count. This is the one y'all get wrong. Discrete, you count. Uh, continuous, you what? Starts with M. Measure. You measure. Distance, ding. You don't even have to read it. It's continuous. So which one is continuous? It's either Alpha or Bravo. 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 It's measurable. It's not countable. You count eggs. You measure height, distance, volume, blah, blah, blah. We'll go back to the five number summary after we've covered everything to see if you've got. Okay. What is this? Okay. Approximate mean standard deviation. We'll come back to that one. Okay. If you, if you want to find your grade at the end of the semester, what button do you hit? I'm sorry, that's not it. And your, your, you hit the button and your score has decreased. That means that Bravo, Hubert and Russia have conspired against you. No, how about a zero? This is the chick that said, oh, I didn't know a zero brought my grade down. <laughs> You've been 12 years in school and you didn't know a zero brought your grade down. That's a bunch of bull crap. <laughs> Next. When does the homework terminate? Charlie. Number one, 
most missed question of Hubert's bonus questions? A, thank you. Why is it not D? Doesn't equal 100. That's a dang old math question there. Okay, find the sample variance and standard deviation. Again, we're going to skip that one. You should be able to do that one real quick. Now, this one, I would use your calculator, okay, because you can take your calculator and punch five numbers in quicker than you can do all the stuff on the spreadsheet. But if I give you one with 15 numbers, you might want to do the Excel spreadsheet, but that's up to you, okay? And that little tab's there, so you can use the Excel spreadsheet. Next. In your grade book, if you find, if you find your final grade after, I'm sorry, to find your final grade after you have completed all your assignments, what do you hit? This is for the students that email me at the end of the semester and what's the question? How do I know what my grade is? I have no earthly idea. And what if you want to see how you got that grade? You hit show calculation. And that's where you're going to see that you didn't do unit three test. And then you're going to call me and say, oh, I didn't know there was a unit three test, and I'm not going to reply. Or I'm not going to, I'm just going to hang up. If you have several forms of a test in Hubert's class, how is it counted? I personally like Charlie, but it's Bravo. If a student does not complete a homework assignment or test, what grade will be recorded for that assignment? Oh, I had no idea. It's not supposed to clump them up like this. It's supposed to put math questions in between them. What should a student do if something happens and they're out of class for a while? What do you do at work if you're going to be out of work for a week or two? You blame it on the Russians and call Bernie. How about communicate? If you, incomplete, if you have incomplete assignments, what does zeros do to your grade? Now, a lot of you are saying, well, golly, he's asking the same question. Yep, I sure am. I'm, I'll, I'll admit it. That way, when you email me at the end of the semester and go, oh, I didn't know, I'm not going to reply. Why do I not entertain extra credit points at the end of the semester? Alpha is good. Alpha is a real good one. How about awards me extra points for these questions? You cannot know anything about this test and make a 30 on it just by answering these questions. Determine whether the variable is qualitative or quantitative. Favorite sport? Qualitative. If you want to know, give me the average of your favorite sport. Always ask that question. Give me the average of your favorite eye color. Give me the average of blonde, brunettes, and redheads. Always ask that question, and you'll know if you if it's discrete or qualitative or quantitative. Give me the average of the weights in the class. Give me the average of the shoe sizes. What did I say a while ago? The average times on a homework question. Those are quantitative data. So which one is it? Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, or Delta? Alpha? Let's check it. I don't read them. And that's it. Now let's go back. Let's see which ones we didn't do. Okay, it didn't tell us. Yeah, there it is. There's one. There we go. Let's do that one. I'll put the do jiggers in a Excel spreadsheet so you can see it. And it looks like they want you to do a five number summary. There you go. I'm gonna make sure they're in order because sometimes they sometimes they give them to you in order, and sometimes they give you the first two in order, and the rest of them are out of order. So you always got to check them. There you go. It was just asking for the five number summary and box plot, and then it's probably gonna ask you: Is it a normal distribution or skewed left or skewed right? This test isn't hard enough. I think I need to go back and change it. I think it's great. It's not easy. It's just that y'all know how to what? You know how to do it. Do you know there's people that actually 
sit through the first three or four weeks of class in 120 and they don't know how to do this stuff. It's amazing to me. And it's not their fault. Can I talk to class now? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, just get out. Hold on a second. Miss Dunziak is calling in. D U D. She called me at 15 after. I'm sorry, but I would already started. There you go. Oh, Miss Dunziak, are you there? Yeah. What are the directions for Skyping in? I emailed you. Refer to the directions. You're not supposed to email me. Am I supposed to text you? Yes. That way, the only reason I saw that you were Skyping in is because my phone went to my email and I saw it. So that's why I asked you to text. I would have got it a whole lot better if you'd have texted me. Sorry. All right, so they want the five number summary. So you don't have to do the mean and the standard deviation. All you got to do is mean. First. Second. Third. And max. And then we also need the mid range. So I'm going to put the MR right there. And the mean. I'll do that one for you. And I'll also do the max for you. There you go. I calculated those for you. Equals parentheses the highest plus the lowest divided by what? And let's go for the second. Let's go handy dandy. No sneezing in class. Do it again, you fail. All right, we got 15, so let's go for seven. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you're tough, Mr. Paps. You can take it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I always check. Sometimes, have you ever been looking at a bunch of zeros, and you try to count them with your eyes, and there's five zeros there, and you see six, or vice versa? That's why I always check, and I count. Because even though it says seven over there and I picked eight, I want to make sure. Okay? Because y'all get all over when, when the teacher makes a mistake, y'all get all happy inside. <laughs> oh, he made a mistake. Ooh. He sucks. Ooh. It just makes us very human. Yeah, I am very human. I make a lot of mistakes. We won't even talk about mistakes I make. All right, so there's our dot. That dot represents the median because if we had two numbers there, it would be in between them and you'd have to count the numbers. So the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that means I'm going to highlight the fourth number. So I'm going to highlight the fourth number and we'll highlight that blue. Okay, well... Let's just go down here and do this one then. I'm sorry. I'll highlight that one blue and we'll make it that one. Equals number. And then we'll go up here and highlight that one per day. And that'll be that number. So draw your box plot. Now you got all your information you need. So there's that. There's that. Things I do for y'all.
it takes talent to draw with a mouse, let me tell you. I'm not even going to try to draw numbers. So we've got a 46 here. I need training. 46 here and a 55 here. No, 64. 64 there. And the mid range is 55. So the distance between 46 and 55 is dang old what? Nine? So half of nine is five. So you don't put a, you can put four or five, I don't care. Four would be 50. Put a four here, that'd be 59. Um, two would be 48. 52. 57. And 61. Now take our green marker and we do a 48. And then 55 or 61 there. And 55 is there. So y'all see what we've got. We've got a what curve? we got a normal curve. I'm not going to draw the, it should be yellow in the middle, I'm sorry. There's your box plot. So you're going to be looking for a block, box plot. You're going to be looking for a box plot that has 55 centered with the mean mark in the box. So let's go back to our handy dandy. And y'all need to write down the five number summary because I'm not going to remember it. So let's go back to the question. So the mat, the mem is 47. I'm looking at the numbers. 47. Y'all make sure. 46. 46. Okay. Well, I just just give me the numbers. 48. 48. 55. 61. 64. And which one lines up with the center, Charlie? Looks like I don't know, but it looks like because that was 55 is the, or what was the what was the mid range? 55. 55. Okay, here's 55 right here. Nope. Here's 55 right here. Nope. Ding. So that one's it. So it is roughly symmetric, I would say, and we feel good about ourselves. Let's go back and see which one we didn't do. There was another one. Did we just do question nine? Yes. Why, why didn't it put a circle beside it? I oh, will. Thirteen. All right. This is where we... We didn't cover this. Okay. There's only one question, so we're going to cover it. Oh, Lord. No, I'm going to take it off. I'm gonna take it off. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. We don't. We, I know how to do it, and I didn't cover it. It's too late now. I'm just gonna take it off. So what question is that? That's question number. I'll have to find it after class. So we're not gonna worry about that one. Let's get out of that. I think that's the only one. Why won't it let me? Really? You, you're gonna log me out in the middle of a test. Damn Russians. Thankfully it changed everything now. <laughs> We'd finished the test, didn't we? Did we do all of them except for 17? Well, now it's going to change it. So, you are section 10. Let's see if I can pull up the same test. I don't know if it'll let me do it or not. Was it 17? Nope, changed it. Let's see. If, let's see if I can find it. Let me. I'm gonna take that one out, but I can't do that here. Let's just look and see right quick and see if there's any different questions on this one. My whole point of doing the the questions 
was I was going to show you that. Oh, well, forget it. I can't do it now, but anyway. We did that one. Okay, here's one we didn't do. A highly selective, see, like I said, it throws in different questions. A highly selective boarding school will only admit a student who, placed, who places at least 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. I saw that yawn. On the standardized test that has a mean of 200 and a standard, what does that mean? Mean of 200 and standard deviation of 26. What does that translate to? Draw the curve. Draw the curve. So do it. Well, I don't know what to do. Draw the curve. Then look at the question. This is a Z-score problem. place at least 2.5 at least at least 2.5 so that means your lowest z score is 2.5 everybody with me so that means one two right there so they take these people right here that's racist they shouldn't do that they shouldn't take the highest scoring people that's bad I'm being sarcastic. So, you got zero, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. Just like Emory and Duke. Why would they take the highest scoring people? I always want a doctor that can't pass a test. You know. So, what do you do? Well... We got a little bit of a problem. We're looking for the X and the Z score. What is the Z? That's where your algebra comes in. Okay, there's a little. It's currently 9:00 a.m. So Z is equal to X minus X bar over what? So I've got to solve for the standard deviation. If you solve it, I'm going to put Z is equal to X minus mu. I'm going to change it because it's easier to remember if you do population numbers, okay? Just trust me. So X minus mu over standard deviation. If you use your algebra and solve for X, you get X is equal to Oz plus mu. Oz plus mu is easier to remember than the other. That's why I use Oz plus mu. Everybody understand that? Y'all can remember Oz plus mu. Okay. Now we need X. We've got standard deviation. We've got the what? Z score, 2.5. And we've got mu, which is 200. Plug and chug. X is equal to, standard deviation is 26. The Z score is 2.5. Can't sneeze even though it's quick time. 200 
And somebody give me that. Now, somebody tell me what y'all think it is. Well, let's see. 278 minus 252 is 26. Because 26 is our half of 26 is what? 13. So 13 plus this is 2 what? 265. So by the empirical rule, I'm going to say it's around 265. I'm going to put a little equals with a dot under it. That's by common sense. Somebody crank out the number here. What do you get? It's a miracle. That's your answer. Actually, I'm supposed to let you derive Oz plus mu with your algebra, but I just went ahead and just gave you Oz plus mu. You're supposed to derive it. Okay, that's good. So, now I'm going to put, what did we get? 265 and check it. And while y'all are all sitting here, I'm going to go back to the test and fix that test because I'll, uh, that was my mistake. I didn't cover that. And that's one of my, it's one of my favorite things to cover because you do it all on the spreadsheet. So I messed up. Now we could go back and learn it if you want to. Has somebody already got into the test? Now I can't change it because somebody decided to go into the test. Well, I hope you enjoy it. You just screwed over the whole class. Anyway, I'll have to change it. Everybody's just just skip that question, and we'll have to. I'll have to give everybody points after the test. Okay, deal. Y'all, y'all get me. I mean, what the hell is the damn hurry? Good God. Now please don't raise your hand and say, you're talking about me. My 